from the News Channel 5 Network. This is Open Line. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Line. Glad you're with us. We are talking real estate today, and there's so much that's changed. So many questions I have. So happy that we have with us here in person someone who can help answer these questions. Gabriella Lira, real estate broker with Compass. Hi, Hi. so good to see you. You've been you've been on Zoom before. I have. And so now you're here in person. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. And all right, when you were on Zoom, that was a few months ago. That's right. Um, it was a very hot real estate market. The interest rates hadn't started going up. What are we seeing now? What, what, what is the situation with real estate right now? So the market has completely changed. This is what we call a normalizing market. Things are completely different. If we look at the data, July was the last data that came out that they released, right? So that's what we have to compare with. So sales were down 19% compared to the same time last July and inventory was up 76% from the same time period last year. And so what does that mean if you are trying to buy or to sell a house? What does that mean? Well, if you're trying to sell, that means that there's a lot more competition out there. In the past, you could just put your house on the market, maybe not make any repairs, maybe not spruce it up, anymore uh, but now you have to make it look great so we are back in the previous markets where you actually have to put some effort into your home if you want to sell it quickly and for top dollar and so what is the reason behind the change in just one year why why would you say that's happened so there are many factors inflation is one of them rising interest rates is another and Believe it or not, the Middle Tennessee area is faring so much better than a lot of my colleagues across the country and a lot of markets across the country are. What One of the reasons they raised interest rates was to slow things down, That's was right. to cool the economy down. Housing was right up there at the top where things just, the price increases were ridiculous. It seemed unrealistic yeah. and ridiculous. I mean, they were fun, I guess, for a while for people that were selling their house oh, or I in your business. Oh, I couldn't believe it. We were getting offers $100,000, $200,000 over asking price. So it was absolutely <laughs> wild. It was wild. And we are not seeing that happen as often anymore. The data so far is not telling us that prices are going down. So all of the experts, what they're saying is that prices will continue to rise, just not at the same pace as they've been rising in the past. However, I am seeing a lot of price reductions out there. So we'll wait and see in the next few months if that changes or not. Because that's the question. Is it a bubble? Are we going to see prices sharply decrease? I mean, they sharply no. went up. So wouldn't it make sense they could come down a bit? I mean, didn't they go up too much? Well, that's a matter of opinion. Some might say that Nashville's a growing city, that we've grown up now, and that that's where prices should be. Uh, the consumer's willing to pay it, right? Because we have reloads from California and New York and Miami, Chicago coming here, and they are less price sensitive than a national native might be, and they are willing to pay these prices because back home, they can't get anything for that price. So to them, a $2 million house here is amazing. It's priced so great compared to what they could get for that same amount in their hometown. Is a reason that we're seeing um, these changes, you, you mentioned a couple of them. What about the, that they're building more houses? That was always kind of a problem. Dur certainly during the pandemic, there wasn't um, a lot of house building going on. The materials weren't there or whatever the work. Are we seeing more houses being built? Is that part of the reason? Uh, prices are stabilizing and that kind of thing, or, or is that not the case? Well, we see so many houses being built, right? You drive down the street and there's one, oh, there's <laughs> one here. So you would think that there is an oversupply of homes, but that is actually not the case. We are actually underbuilt compared to the demand that is out there. And the 
last bubble we had, one of the things that happened is because there was so much demand, builders did overbuild. And when the market crashed, they pulled back significantly. Some went out of business, right, because they were left holding so much inventory, but the ones that were left, they have trauma from the past, so they are very cautiously building. And and is this a bubble? I, I ask you that, but do you think we're going to see, you don't think we're going to crash back down? No. All of the economists I've spoken to say we are not in, the, in a bubble. Uh, the marketplace is fundamentally different than what it was when we did have a real estate market bubble. And one of the main differences is lending standards. So back in those days, you could get a no income verification loan. I mean, can you imagine that? That you go into the bank, they say, okay, you self-reported, I make $500,000, sure you do. And they would not verify your income. They would just give you a loan based on self-reported data. So people who actually were not credit worthy and could not afford these homes were getting loans to buy this home. So when things corrected, these people went into foreclosure. And now they're, because of that time period and the fiasco that that cost, now there are so many rules and regulations around the mortgage industry, around the banking industry, that people who are getting loans nowadays are actually credit worthy and they can afford the homes that they're buying. So who is your typical client right now? Is it someone coming in from out of state that maybe sold a house in another market and got a nice bit of money? Is it a first time home buyer? And I and I, I would assume you probably deal with both, but walk us through what each of those face and, and maybe who is your typical client right now? Yeah, so first time home buyers, it's been a really tough market for them, right? Prices have been really high. There's been a lot of competition for those entry price points that a first time home buyer would be able to afford. So we're actually in this market seeing more of those first time home buyers come out of the woodworks because there is more opportunity for buyers in this market than there has been in the past few years. So that would be our first first time home buyer. They, we're now seeing more of those, but over 40% of our business is relocation business. So I am getting, you know, your executive from California moving here for work. The interesting thing is that we have always been a work-related move destination. So the offices of economic development they do such a great job of attracting <laughs> like all these headquarters of corporations with incentives and whatnot, right? So all these companies are moving here and they are bringing in jobs with them, bringing in people who already work for them or creating jobs as well. But when COVID hit, we became the number one COVID related move destination. So employers were saying, well, you can go work anywhere because we've realized that you working from home is working out for everyone. And those people, a lot of them chose the middle Tennessee area as the place where they just wanted to live and work remotely. So that is very interesting to me. 40% of your business is people relocating. Yes. Those are the people that are going to come in with a lot of money because they're coming in from another market and they've sold their house and they're, and they're used to high prices. You would think so, right? Some of them get sticker shock, I will say, depending on where they're coming from. Some of them come here and think like, oh my gosh, I thought Nashville was much less expensive than where I'm coming from. But truly, the prices have risen so much that we are not that far behind some of these larger markets. And I want to ask this one more time, just to some, do you think then that those prices, which have gone up astronomically, I look around, you know, neighborhoods that, that I've, I've known for a long time and I'm, I'm stunned and I think it's somewhat absurd, frankly, I mean, it's just shocking. Yeah. Will that come down? Will that correct itself? Or are we at a place where those things aren't coming down in your opinion? Here's what I know for sure. 
I know that the data so far is not telling us that prices are coming down and the experts, the economists I've spoken to that I've heard speak on the subject, they are not telling us that that is where the market is headed. They are saying that prices will continue to rise, just not at the rate at which they've been rising. But again, I don't have a crystal ball, so I have seen a lot of price corrections or price reductions, if you will. So we'll see in the next few months if that data changes. Mm -hmm. And then you said first time home buyers. I'm gonna start taking some calls. We'll go ahead and open up the lines. A couple people are already on, so hold on. But if you wanna call in, there's a number 615-737 plus 615-737-7587. Um, you're saying first time home buyers a little easier now. Still, those prices are so crazy to me that it would have to be very hard. But walk us through what you're seeing with first time home buyers and what, what they're facing. So first they're getting pre-approved, right? And they have to figure out, number one, a big challenge I've heard from first time home buyers is how do we save for a down payment? And one of my hacks for that is to get a side hustle. You know, drive for Uber or Lyft, look in your house, look in your closet, ladies. Are they, there are things that you're not wearing that you can sell on eBay, uh, on Poshmark? and then get some extra income from those things. If you have a certain skill set, you know, maybe do that in the evenings or the weekends so that you can save up for that down payment. That is the number one hurdle that I am hearing first time buyers have. That is that they are finding it very difficult to save for a down payment. Then talk to a reputable lender because there are a lot of lending products out there. Some where you could put as little as three or three and a half percent down. And so once you get pre-approved for your mortgage, then you have to call a reputable real estate agent like myself and my team. So then we can educate you on the home buying process, give you a reality check about what you're able to afford and in what areas. And then we can start shopping from there. There's more inventory out there. So you have more options and we are seeing less multiple offer situations now than we have in the past. So I would say if you are a buyer on the fence or a first time home buyer that has felt like they could just not enter into this market, there is an opportunity for you now. What are most banks wanting now as far as a down payment? You said there's some that are as low as 3%. I'm kind of surprised to hear that. But what, what, is, what is standard? I'd say that there truly is no standard. Some people would say 10%. I mean, you can do as low as three, and I've seen people do as much as 50. My husband and I, when we got our loan, we knew that we wanted to do a minimum of 20% down because then that removes the mortgage insurance from your loan, and you save, you know, depending on the size of your loan, a few hundred dollars a month in your payment. Okay. We have several calls. Let's go to Ann. Hello, Ann. Good evening. Um, my little street is only six blocks long. And two years ago, my little two block section of it had had 19 homes built on it. And I thought I didn't, we were done with construction. But in the last 18 months, nine more permits have been pulled for construction. So I don't believe the boom has slowed down. Um, of those, what, 28 homes on my little two blocks, many of them are owned by out-of-state LLCs, and there is no control of the number of people that are rent or leasing one home and one of these on my street has seven people living in it right now which violates metro codes each and every day and many of these are on my little two block much less my six block street and these are cluttering east nashville all over the place with llc's from out of state so it's not families moving into some of these, probably 13%, I believe, the study I looked at, are in Nashville, predominantly East Nashville, that are owned by LLCs. 
And then the next major statistic are two people and dogs, not children, not families moving into our community. So we need to think about that when we think about who is buying into our quote communities because we're not replenishing our communities with families. And that is something to think about. Hmm. And you can do that by looking at our school enrollment and that includes the private sector and the public sector because it includes all children in the state and city. So those are numbers we also need to look at when we look at real estate updates. And right. that's my comment, and I'll listen to the other calls. Well, so and have a good evening. And you thank too. you. Thank you. So you have a really good point there. Nashville, Middle Tennessee has been such a, an attraction for investors. So investors are buying up rentals. They're buying up short-term rentals. A lot of those new Airbnb-able properties that are out there, they are selling for 900,000. I've seen them up to a million five for a three, four bedroom Airbnb property because they are making such great returns off of that. The other trend that we're seeing that maybe she's referring to is that we're seeing these institutional investors coming in and buying so many homes. So American Homes for Rent, for example, they are coming into subdivisions, communities, and buying as many homes as they possibly can and turning around and renting them. And is that who's behind these phone calls that people get or mailings that people get saying, hey, I just happen to be driving by and are you going to sell your house or we would like to make you a cash offer on your house? Who's behind that? It could be one of so many players. It could be a real estate agent like myself, and that's a prospecting tool that they use to try and get more listings. It could be an investor like these institutional buyers that we're thinking of, um, or it could be an e-buyer like the Zillows and the open doors of the world. And I've done a few reports on what we call Wall Street companies coming yes. and buying these homes. They're, they're buying in neighborhoods. They're also now buying plots of land and building entire neighborhoods. Oh, they're buying entire subdivisions. Sometimes they approach a developer before they're even done building the subdivision and they say, instead of selling these off one by one, we will buy all of these from you. And they like single family homes. And they uh, rent for a lot of money. Yes, they do. Um, and they're people that, uh, what, what would you say? Is, is it better to rent or is it better to own a house? Well, it depends on your specific situation. So you should talk to a mortgage broker. You should start talking to a real estate broker if you are considering buying because we need to make sure that you are financially capable of purchasing, but that you also understand the responsibility that comes with home ownership. Now, Anne, I know, I bet your neighborhood does not have an HOA. Sometimes HOAs, they can do things. If you're concerned about these institutional investors coming in, sometimes they can do things to um, uh, regulate that in some way. Then right. The other thing, we're going to go to break here in a second, but the other thing she said, two people and dogs. Is that... I hadn't heard that, but are, are you seeing that? I mean, basically well, no kids. this is what I know. Whether you choose to have kids or not, that is completely a personal choice. But what we are seeing is that people are making more buying decisions based on their pets. Let me tell you, <laughs> we did. We needed a place with a yard because we have two little dogs. And so we considered them in our home buying process. And a lot of people are doing that. Okay. All right. Very interesting. All right. Um, Tim, I believe, hold on the line. Or is it Kim? Kim, hold on the line. Others, if you want to call in, 615-737 plus 615-737-7587. We'll take a break. Be back right after this.